Welcome back everyone. A viewer asked if I could make a tutorial on how to remove text from a magazine cover. I thought to myself that that would unlock a whole world of images that people could use for their personal projects. So let me show you how I went from this image to this one using Affinity Photo 2. I started with this mock magazine cover I downloaded from pixabay.com. Like a lot of real magazine covers, the name of the magazine is printed behind the model on the cover. I started by duplicating the layer by clicking Command or Control J. Next, I clicked on my selection brush tool in the left-hand toolbar and started painting over the subject to isolate her from the background. I'll go over the whole woman, but the most important part is the details that are over the text. I can make my brush head smaller by clicking the left square bracket key a few times. And I can undo areas I selected by accident by holding the Option or Alt key while painting them away. Alright, now that I have a good selection, I'll click on the Refine tool in the top toolbar. Then, I'll use the default matte adjustment brush to paint over the areas of her hair to let Affinity try to select the hair. I can also use the background or foreground adjustment brush tools to help further refine my selection. I think this looks pretty good, so I'll go to the Output drop-down and select New Layer with Mask and then Apply. OK, next we'll select the top background layer and then go back to the Selection Brush tool to select all of the letters. Make sure the mode is set to Add in the top left toolbar and then just click and drag a little on each letter to select them. Don't worry about selecting the hair. That's why we isolated it into a new layer earlier. To remove the spots in the text that were over-selected, just hold the Option or Alt key and paint over them. All right, now to make sure the outside of the letters are completely within the selection, go to Select in the menu and then click on Grow Shrink near the bottom. I'll manually type in 2 for the pixels to expand my selection slightly. Next, I'll go back to the menu and select Edit and then Fill to bring up the Fill panel. Then, I'll select the In Painting option. Affinity will think for a moment and then fill in the selection with a new background. OK, this text at the bottom here is a bit easier as the model is not in front of it. I'll show you a different way to remove it. I'll click on the square band-aid shaped patch tool and then use my cursor and click and drag around the selection. To set the patch, just release your mouse. Then move your cursor around the background until you find an area that fills the selection in as best as possible and click that spot. Then click a second time to set it. Don't worry if you don't get it all in on the first try. You can do it again with the remaining section. There, that looks pretty good. All right, now there's still some yellow from the text in the image. By turning the different layers on and off, I can see that the cutout is good and that the yellow is on the middle layer. I'll use a third method here to remove that and blend things in. With the middle layer selected, I'll click on the Clone tool in the left-hand toolbar. Then, I'll go to my Brushes panel to the right of the Layers panel and select a nice round soft brush from the Basic category. To use the Clone tool, I'll first adjust my brush size up a little bit by clicking the right square bracket key. Then, I'll place my cursor in an area where I want my clone sample to begin. Then, I'll slowly paint over the area that I want to cover with the clone. Usually it's best to work in little bits taking samples from different area, depending on what you want to clone over. Practice this a bit and you'll get the hang of it.
I'll just do a couple more passes here to blend things in. All right, that looks pretty good for just a few minutes work. I'll click the layers on and off so you can see the before and after. All right, that's about it for today. If you learned something and want to see more of this kind of content, please click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're feeling generous, this channel runs on caffeine. There's a link to buy me a cup of coffee in the descriptions. Not necessary, but certainly appreciated. Have a great day, everyone.